Well, beloved Dub Dub! Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Esports Money, ZSM, MAC10, whatever you want to call me, and welcome to another video on VR Force. This is not the first Vorpex video I've made, but I believe it is the first Vorpex video I've made specifically for the VR Force channel. Uh, so, good. Looks like my mic's working now. Um, so, what we're going to be talking about today are uh, Direct VR, uh, Direct VR, which is what I'll be talking about last, and then Geometry 3D versus Z Buffer or uh, uh, Z. Well, Z buffer, which is a general term, which you can break down into either Z normal or Z adaptive. So, what Geometry 3D does is it gives a much more convincing uh, rendition of 3D space and 3D imagery and depth perception because of the fact that it renders two images. Now, that might seem a little bit. You might be wondering why this is. Um, and if you only have one eye, you actually lose a huge amount of depth perception. It's something a lot of people don't realize that if you only have vision in one eye, not, not me, I mean, I, I have vision in both eyes, but if you only have vision in one eye, there are certain elements of depth perception and objects moving through 3D space that you don't have because you don't have two sources of vision from two separate physical locations on your body. They're close together, but they are separate in their location. Um, so what Geometry 3D does is it renders two separate images at the same time. This is why ge using Geometry 3D quite literally doubles the demand on your GPU. When I play a game in Vorpex, I can choose to have the resolution at uh, 4K. Actually, I think I'm playing it above 4K through my Oculus. Or I can play with Geometry 3D. And it's actually a pretty hard decision for me in a lot of cases because I don't like that trade-off. In fact, when you're looking at 3D separation, um, it's... It's almost like you're separating, the, you're determining the distance between your eyes. Like it's moving those apart. Um, it's also, it, it's it's changing the difference in the distance uh, of objects or the size of objects that are in the distance for each eye to try to give you a more realistic uh, depiction of what you're looking at. Um, so what is Z normal, uh, Z adaptive, or the two types of Z buffer, and what do they do? Well, I'm not entirely sure of the mechanics through which they work, but they're basically an emulated version of this. You have, uh, you're not copying the image twice over, but you're modifying that image to create depth perception. Um, some Vorpex titles now have a 3D separation slider for Z normal, and this is actually, tinkering with that is actually my preferred way to enjoy Vorpex, because I can still play the game at a very high resolution without sacrificing my frame rate. In fact, cutting the resolution down to half and playing on Geometry 3D, I get a lower quality image than if the resolution is doubled and Geometry 3D is off and I'm playing on Z normal or with no emulated stereoscopic 3D. For the first several months I owned Vorpex, I actually never used any emulated 3D and now I use Z normal. So now you might be wondering what is the difference between Z normal and Z adaptive? So Z normal is basically what I've said without a lot of uh, uh, tassels or I'm trying to think of a term for like fancy extras. Um, but Z adaptive has a depth has a depth of fields feature. And even if you turn that off, it has its own built in uh, feature that separates it from Z normal. And that feature is uh, even with adapt, uh, even with a uh, depth of field turned off. It's basically a, a smaller version of that. And for that reason, I, I played with Adaptive Sync a lot and decided, or a, a Z Adaptive a lot. Sorry, Adaptive Sync's a whole other thing. I've played with Z Adaptive a lot, and I prefer Z Normal because I really don't like depth of field in my games. And if you're wondering what depth of field is, depth of field, sorry, depth of field. It's, um, this is a very good description, a good uh, visualization of what depth of field is. It's when you, like, when you when I focus on my finger, everything behind my finger is blurry. When I focus on the monitor behind my finger, my monitor becomes blurry. It's like that. It kind of it's trying to force that quality, um, and unless I'm playing something that's true VR. And to some extent, I mean, Geometry 3D does this naturally. It's just something that happens with your eyes, which is fine and cool. But when you try to force that and emulate that um, in something like this photo, if this were in a video game, uh, a lot of video games have a depth of field 
feature. And when that depth of field is created, it is it's unnatural. A lot of people don't. A lot of people prefer not to use it. Myself being one of those people. When you're looking at a flat screen, because I can't control what's being blurred in the background and what's being uh, what's being blurred and what's in focus with my eyes. I have to control that with the camera that I control with my mouse, which is awkward and it makes it so a lot of people aren't aren't big on the depth of field. Uh, I think people that are people that are really uh, into creating photo quality images. Depth of field is a very good it's a very useful feature in video games when you're trying to create screenshots and you're trying to create uh, video footage to make it look more convincing and more realistic, but it usually hurts the quality of play for uh, gamers. And I would say usually. I think the majority of people don't like depth of field. In, in what I've read, I would, I would wager that the majority of people don't like it, despite the fact that it's a very common and popular feature. It's almost like that bloom shit that was all over Oblivion. If you played Oblivion, you know that shininess that seems to be on everything and how everything's like way too bright? Um, bloom was a technology that came out uh, before Oblivion, but Oblivion was one of the games that really got their hands on it and really got to play with it. And when you give developers a new tool, they tend to go ham with it. Um, I'm not big on anti-aliasing in a lot of older titles. Newer titles, it looks better. But when anti-aliasing first came out, I thought everything just looked really blurry and didn't use it. So now that we're done with that, I'm going to move on to uh, Direct VR. So what is Direct VR? Direct VR is a scan that actually scans your memory for specific values and then applies the settings in your Oculus and your scanner and the position of you to those values, essentially. Um, and that's probably a very dumbed down version of it, but Direct VR is one of the features of Vorpex that I don't understand as well as all the other features. It's relatively new, it's only available for uh, a handful of games. I know the Unreal 3 engine is very, very compatible with it. And the game, all the Bethesda titles seem to be relatively compatible with it because I know Ralph, who is the uh, essentially the guy that makes Vorpex, is really, really big on Bethesda RPGs and always has direct VR for the newer uh, Bethesda RPGs. I think it might be in Fallout 3, maybe New Vegas, those games. I'm not sure. I would need to double check. Um, so I, I would like to go back and play through those in VR with Direct VR. What Direct VR does is it takes the legwork out of your game. Basically, all of those profiles are handcrafted by the developer to give you a very specific field of view, to give you a very specific sized HUD, and to give you a very specific perspective. perspective. Everything is perfectly tuned, um, and yes, that's what the developer prefers. But I have never found an instance where I've played a game with Direct VR, and I've played a lot of Vorpex titles before they had Direct VR, and now when they do have Direct VR, and Direct VR is a godsend. Everything feels so much more natural. Everything feels like it runs the way it, it should have ran all the time. Um, in fact, uh, I would say if you have a title with uh, a Direct VR scan, you still have to set your 3D separation with either your Z buffer or your Geometry 3D or off, if that's how you play. You still have to set those up. But if you set up your 3D separation appropriately, DirectVR uh, takes care of pretty much everything else. And DirectVR with appropriate 3D separation makes almost every game I've ever played through it feel like it was designed to be played through an Oculus headset with an Xbox 360 controller. Pretty much every single game that I've found that does that. I think Morrowind might actually have direct VR. I'm not 100% on that. Um, but if so, that's a kind of a notable exception because of the fact that controller support for those older games can be kind of a nightmare. So um, that is, I feel like, a pretty good demonstration of what uh, Geometry 3D and uh, the Z buffer modes offer. Um, Again, I am not 100% on how direct VR works, but the point is you don't really need to know how it works. You just need to know that it's good. If you see a game um, that has direct VR support on the Vorpex list, you should try it just because it has that. It's that much more of a superior experience than the titles that do not. So thank you guys very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. Please hit the subscribe button. I'm just getting this channel started up. I have another channel that's got almost 6,000 subscribers, uh, but that's mostly focused on Dota 2 content. Um, the giveaway for Carnage Chronicles will be 
probably this Wednesday. If there's a video uh, for that where you can leave a comment to register for the giveaway, I'll be sending out five Steam keys for that giveaway. So thank you very much, and have a wonderful rest of your weekend. Actually, no. I'm recording this Sunday night, so have a, a wonderful rest of your Monday. See ya.